So this is meditation on Young's Asian spot. A little pain in my heart just won't let me be. Wake up at restless nights. Lord, and I can't even sleep. Oh, it's ready. This is one. My Obachan is a mirrored reflection of the woman who was assaulted in San Francisco's Chinatown. Same delicate frame glazed atop wooden blocks. Her resiliency and tough skin would have had her react the same. Surviving two atomic bombs tenderizes malleable hearts. She soothes her pain by transmitting recipes and New York ceremonies to me as if rubbing aloe vera across radiation. How many reincarnations must we go through just to be seen? We always have our defenses up. My uncle was given a DUI while riding his bicycle home from the bar. He ran a stop sign beneath a midnight moon. The marina police officers tracked his every move that night as if patrolling the parameters of an internment prison camp. Don't they know pebbles already disintegrate into sand? He lost his license, his job, and himself to the bottle. Lost the ability to teach me how to play the minor scale. If my uncle wasn't Japanese, he may still be alive. My mother moved to the United States in 1972. She was 12 years old when she landed the outskirts of Atlanta, Georgia. Back then, the casual chink or jack name-calling was normality. Shoelaces tied together, backpacks stolen and burned. Rocks hurled as if firing the first battle shot. Crimson scab bolt cuts and bloody oriental blossom pattern kimonos. Told to keep her head tilted, eyes glazed beneath the dirt. The mother tongue must never be spoken where it isn't wanted. She can no longer guide me through Tonka and Kanji. Blood moon, winter's drift. Island memories capsize, assimilation. Sky glow evenings shine dirt paths. Light incense and sprinkle rice. Hello, how are you? Ohayu gozamasu. The serpent's dual tongue slithers between the two worlds. Who will carry our language? Blossoms withered to bone, weeping willows. Lotus root, silk kimonos, torn splintered gaitas at the door, the setting sun vanishes. This too. Tammy is afraid to leave her house alone. Her caramelized Laotian complexion makes her the darkest resident in the pristine seaside town of Trinidad. A vacation renters market atop the harbor. Her neighbors spy on her feathered steps to the market. Every time I travel to the city, I bring spices imported from her homeland, as if a stove-top cauldron could boil folktales like magic. She knew one of the spa workers killed and isn't taking any chances. She is used to this fear. A couple days ago, they deported 33 people to Vietnam, a country none of them knows. You didn't hear about it because they aren't reporting on Asian exiles. They're slowly erasing our presence. Luckily, my friend Tan was not on that flight. He has until the end of the month to file an appeal while pacing in Aurora, Colorado ICE Detention Center. He's already served 28 years. Kunlinya's heart is too large to be contained within 70 square feet. It bleeds beyond the prison gate, flowing into discourse communities who will never know what it's like to be referenced as other, or given a death sentence as a teenager. His cell is his monk's chamber, breathing in his parents' Khmer Rouge, exhaling compassion and loving kindness. We talk every week about Asian plight and precepts. Our letters are filled with entering the places that scare us. He is a living Buddha, adorned in state-issued blue cloth. We don't talk enough about grieving the spilled sencha of survivor's guilt. The broken bamboo dobin carried from the island on sunrises. The kiyusu stamped with Hiroshiga's Takedo Road that fades like cherry in the wind. The presence of Yire, Dayu, Gleason, Bongma, Ap, and Lasu surrounds us. All my childhood friends suffer from existence. Names carved in stone stuck in the bardo. Ancestors never given proper funeral rites. They endlessly chant the triple treasure without a host, carrying the dead weight of ghosts because there is no other home for final rest. He, you, hakusha, begging bowls, eternity, gone, gone, gone beyond.